right. Welcome to Welcome to the SMAW Beads and Fillet Welds Module 9 for WT71. Upon completion of this module, you'll be able to set up shielded metal arc welding equipment, describe methods of striking an arc, properly strike and extinguish an arc, describe causes of arc blow and wander, make stringer weave and overlapping beads, and make fillet welds in the following positions, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. Okay, performance tasks, setting up equipment, striking arc, making stringer weave and overlapping beads, uh, making corner welds, and uh, make fillet welds. All right. Preparing the work area. Step one, ensure that the area is properly ventilated. Make use of doors, windows, and fans. Step two, check the area for fire hazards. Remove any flammable materials before proceeding. Step three, check the location of the nearest fire extinguisher. Do not proceed unless the extinguisher is charged and you know how to use it. Step four, set up flash shields around the welding area. Here's an example of a properly set up welding station. Okay, preparing weld coupons. Weld co coupons should be carbon steel, one quarter to three quarters inch thick. Use a wire brush or grinder to remove heavy mill scale or corrosion. Prepare, prepare weld coupons to practice the following welds. In, uh, weld welds indicated as follows. Striking an arc, the coupons can be any size or shape that can be easily handled. Running beads, same thing, coupons can be any size or shape. Okay, preparing the weld coupons for fillet welds, cut material into four by six rectangles for the base and three by six rectangles for the web. Uh, reuse weld coupons until all surfaces have been welded upon. <laughs> okay, here's an example of the fillet welds, the fillet weld coupons um, as they're set up prior to welding. Okay, amperage, amperages for electrodes. So E6010, we run that eighth inch, uh, 75 to 130 amps. Um, I find it runs best right around 95 amps in all positions with the exception of vertical, um, you need to be 85 to 90 amps. Uh, 7018, I'll see we're running 330 seconds right now, but for eighth inch, 90 to 150. Um, I feel like 125 is where it actually performs the best. Okay, striking an arc. The general rule is that the arc length should be the diameter of the electrode. The arc length is measured from the end of electrode core to the base metal. Okay, uh, here's the scratching method. Um, this leaves arc strikes on the base metal that are not allowed by the weld codes unless they occur within the welded area. Okay, the tapping method. The tapping method is the best method for establishing an arc when using a transformer DC welding machine. Also with the tapping method, you can actually guide the rod and have a lot more control over where you start, the, start your weld and where you strike your arc. Okay, reusing an electrode. A few things to watch out for when you do this is there's missing flux or large cracks that can cause the flux to come off. Um, the flux really does help a lot in stabilizing the arc. Okay, arc blow. <laughs> the magnetic fields tend to concentrate in the corners or deep grooves or the ends of the base metal. Um, when the arc approaches the concentrated metallic fields, it is deflected. Methods to control it, change the position of the workpiece, lead clamp, also referred to as ground, shorten the arc length, change the angle of the electrode. Okay, here we're looking at changing angles to uh, eliminate arc blow. Okay, a weave bead is a bead that is made with a side-to-side -side motion of an electrode. Okay, um, if you can weave and the bead looks appropriate, it's not over-reinforced and there's not excessive undercut along the sides of the weld, um, more power to you. Um, I really prefer that you guys start out, um, especially as you start gaining experience, just with stringers, especially in vertical, um, because it's hard enough to weld vertical and then trying to, you know, you guys need to get some experience before you just go right into a weave bead. Okay. So here we're looking at, uh, at different angles and uh, kind of looking at what happens when, when you're welding. We look at the top picture, the drag, uh, 
angle, the drag travel angle. Um, and that's the angle the, the electrode leans in the direction you're moving. And then the work angle is, is the other angle. So if you look at the front of, front of, the, of the electrode along the axis of the weld, um, what angle you're at there. Okay, whipping motion, also called the stepping motion, can be used when depositing the stringer bead to control the weld puddle. Okay, effects of current, arc length, and travel speed on SMAW beads. So if we look here, um, we're able to see some of the issues that occur and um, can hopefully help you as well to, uh, to uh, weld appropriately and at the appropriate speed. Um, so, you know, um, guys review the chart. It's also in your book. If you have any questions, I can also help you when we look at your weld coupons. Okay, restarting. When we strike an arc to restart, we wanna strike the arc quarter to three eighths of an inch ahead of the weld and then uh, come back towards the weld and start uh, filling the bead in and get a get a good tie into the to the previous weld okay when making a termination the weld codes requires that the crater be filled to the full cross section of the weld so if we look here step one you're welding towards the end step two you kind of straighten up then in step three you're actually starting to fill and come back towards the towards your original weld. <laughs> hey, here's some different weave motions. Again, let's uh, focus on uh, depositing good beads before we get hung up on trying to weave. Hey, okay, here's an example of a weave bead on a practice groove plate. Okay, overlapping beads. Some of you guys have done this, some are still doing this. Um, but if we look on the left, that's what we're looking for. We want good tie-in between the plate and the bead with a nice smooth flat surface. Overlapping beads, weld a stringer bead along one edge, clean the weld. After striking an arc for the next stringer bead and with proper travel angle, position the electrode at a work angle of 10 to 15 degrees to the side of the previous bead to obtain proper tie-in. Okay. Here's an illustration of that and also a uh, view of a uh, bead pad that's been created, it looks like with 7018. All right, fillet welds, convex and concave fillet welds. We talked about this a little bit in weld quality, but uh, when you weld for uh, to a specification, there's gonna be leg length requirements or measurements of the fillet weld. That measurement is based on the leg length. Um, the six pass fillet welds that we're doing right now, um, the ones with eighth inch electrodes should be a, almost a half inch uh, fillet. The ones with the three thirty seconds are probably going to be uh, three eighths or seven sixteenths inch. <laughs> okay, and then uh, also on a lap joint, this is also a fillet weld, but here you could have a spec for an unequal leg fillet. Here's acceptable road uh, acceptable and unacceptable fillet profiles. Uh, we also looked at this in the weld quality chapter. Positions, again, repeated. Um, here's an example of a tacked up uh, coupon for a fillet weld. Okay, here it is. Um, this is what's been causing most of the struggle for you guys here lately. Um, this is the multi-pass fillet weld. This is an illustration of what angle your rod should be at and how the beads should kind of lay in there. Here's a look at a... Um, the weld sequence in vertical. <sighs> um, looking at both uh, weave and uh, stringers. <coughs> okay, here's a look at a triangular weave when doing a fillet. Here's the uh, weld angles and placements when you're doing an overhead six pass fillet. Okay, these next few slides are just like the back part of your book, the performance assessments. All right, class, um, remember we have um, a test coming up. Make sure you've completed the quiz and discussion post prior to the test. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video.